In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from the mechanics paper 4-2 from the Cambridge A-level exams from 2023. I'll be doing this on the board, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing in a classroom. If you want any other questions from this paper, you should be able to find a link to the playlist in the description below. And if you find any of my videos useful, I'd greatly appreciate if you subscribe or if you think any of your friends might find it useful, please go ahead and share it. In question five, we're given an image that looks roughly like this. I tried to copy it and they describe the system. They tell us a particle of mass is placed on a rough plane inclined at an angle. All that means is an object, a ball, think of it, is placed on a hill. The hill has friction on it or it's rough so there will be friction. And then they, they also tell us it's, there's a force coming from the right here that's keeping everything in equilibrium. Um, so that just means it's not moving. So this force is just enough to stop everything from moving. And they tell us the coefficient of friction. Let me write that in somewhere, 0 0.4. And what's the least possible value of P? The, don't worry, that's not, there's no trick there for least possible value. That's just... Um, if, if something's sliding, so there, that pen started to slide there. I can hold it in place with some force. More force also holds it in place. And finally, enough force will get it to, well, okay, I cheated there. Enough force would get it to slide up the hill. Um, so there's multiple answers that will hold this in place because friction will switch directions. Gets a bit complicated. It's, it's no trick or anything. It will come out very naturally the least possible value. They're, they're just covering their, their own ass there really by saying least. Okay, to start this question, uh, let's draw a force diagram, a bit, a bit better than this one here. So we'll start in the center here. We have gravity going down. What's that? S uh, 0 0.6 times 10. Let's put in six newtons for that. We have this P force here, P. Uh, we have friction that will push it but think of this uh, in its natural state, it should fall down the hill. So friction would push back up. Let's put that in as F. And, and don't forget, because so many students do forget, um, the OR. Uh, they, they remember to, to use OR when they're getting F. And they, re, they write OR this way sometimes. Um, hell, I, I think I do it sometimes. Um, like in this question, if if we do it in the in the correct axis, it doesn't really matter. But I think it's important because without or here, there'd be no forces going left, and that'd be a problem. Okay, so these are the forces, uh, and or remember is the opposite to what's being pushed into the ground. So the opposite of what's being pushed into the ground. In this case, gravity is going to push in this way, and and P will push in this way. Or it's just the uh, the the opposite and equal reaction to that. Okay, so these are all the forces involved. You could try and solve this in the x, y axis, just the normal straight and vertical and horizontal. Um, it, it, it seems like it should be okay because P is in that, six is in that. The problem is to find the OR, we have to move P into the other axis. Um, we have to move six into the other axis, so you'd, you'd be wasting your time a little bit. So let's let's solve this in this axis, you know, in the the tilted axis. That's going to be 35 degrees in here. Actually, we, we better keep a close eye on all the angles because that's going to be a difficult part of this question. Okay, so let's try and just move everybody into that. Uh, very quickly, let me draw another force. So F will be this way. There will be a force from P, so let me write here F, and then P will move up into this axis. Let me just write P dot dot dot, because it, it'll be sine or cosine. We'll worry about that in a moment. Uh, going down this way, we'll have uh, 6 dot dot dot. And going this direction, we'll have 6 dot dot dot, and let's say P dot 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 and this direction we'll have OR. So th that's if we move everybody into their components, that, that's, that's, that'll be the plan in this question. And that way we can find OR, OR equals these two added together. We can find F, or sorry, P then, uh, P 
dot 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 plus f will equal six dot dot dot. Um, sorry, uh, those dot dot dots, that sine 35 or cosine 35. We'll just, we'll make sure now in a moment which is which. Okay, so that's the, the rough plan of the question. Um, feel free to p certainly always pause it and try these questions. So let's, uh, let's jump into this one. Um, let's, uh, let's find out what these dots are. Okay, first of all, let's uh, move the P force down into this axis and this axis. So remember, P will be here. There'll be a 35 degree angle. Oh, I already have it here. Um, so let's see, 35 degree angle in here. I'll be moving it like this. So I want the cosine, the adjacent side for this one up here. So this uh, P dot 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 will be, let me just fill it in here, it'll be, it'll be cosine 35. And if that's cosine, well then this is easy, this one's sine 35. Okay, next one we need to break up would be the, the, the sick, the, the, <laughs> the gravity, the one from six newtons here. So from gravity coming down, so let's, uh, let's zoom in on that one because that's the one that gets a little bit more awkward. Uh, gravity's coming down and remember this plane was 35 here and I want that to I want gravity to come up to this and to come across to uh, this this plane here so what are the angles the angles are 90 90 and you, you don't have to do it this way if you're good at this um, and you can just get a quick link up oh look this one is definitely sign I think it is um, Fine, jump to that, but I, I actually have to do it slowly every time because here's the, the real angle, the real force, and I'm moving that up to this one here. So I want to know what one of these two angles, which is 35. Um, now, it might not look obvious here, but it's going to be this one in here. So many students just picked the wrong one. That You need to take your time and do a bit of geometry. If this is 35, that's a right angle. Well, I guess this is 55. This is a right angle. That means in here is the 35. Up here is the 55. And you can use 55. You could use, in this case, um, cosine to, to go this direction. Six cosine, so this one here. Six cosine 55, that's fine. But uh, we're gonna put sine 35 here. And this one then would be cosine. 35. Um, let me think. I, I don't like how I've explained that. I'm not sure if I've put enough of an explanation into that. The problem with this is when after you do hundreds of these, which as a teacher you do, and as a student, once you practice tens and twenty of them, it does become a little second nature to go, oh, angle there, across from across from this angle is the sine. I, I, beside it, adjacent to it is the cosine. So I guess it becomes a little harder to teach over the years. I, I hope I've explained it somewhat there. Okay, let's uh, jump onto the maths then. And let me clean off this line here. Uh, so the force here, the forces here, let's go with these, this direction first of all. That must mean or this direction must equal everything this direction. So that's six cosine 35 plus P sine 35. Let me just check my notes in case um, I've made any mistake here. No, that look, looks good to me. Um, so this tells us, oh, it doesn't tell us or, sorry, we still have P in it. And then let's get the other, the other uh, side here. Um, pick whichever one you want. Let's go with here, six. Oh, I can't, can't read my own writing with all those dots. Uh, six sine 35, I believe is equal to all the forces this way. Well, there's F there and there's um, plus P cosine 35. Okay, these are the two directions. We can equate these to solve everything, except there's one problem, or P and F. There's three unknowns here. So we do need one more thing. We need to remember F is equal to the coefficient four times or. Now, I guess you could think of this as three equations with three unknowns. It's, it's, uh, it works out a lot simpler than thinking of it that way. Um, basically, we can just write, let's write this second line again. Instead of F, let's write 0.4 uh, or. And instead of or, 
We are, actually, let's just write the, uh, with the or first of all. So this line will become 6 sine 35 equals 0 0.4 or 0 0.4 or plus P cosine 35. Now, hopefully it's a little clearer. We have this, we have these two lines um, and two unknowns. We have R and P and R and P. This is just a simultaneous equation. But it's even easier than that, I guess, because we can write this line again. 6 sine 35 is equal 0 0.4 instead of R. They just write R for us. We, we have R. It fits perfectly in. Uh, 6 times cosine 35 plus P sine 35 plus P cosine 35. Remember, we're looking for P. And here's a line with only one unknown, only P. The rest is, is, is all there. So we can just, let's take P out of it. <coughs> if I write, um, yeah, let me, well, let me keep it the way it, it looks here. Let's just take P out of everything we can. So P is in this term multiplied by 0 0.4. So P, 0 0.4 P, oh, sorry, no, no P, 0 0.4 sine 35. Uh, P is also in this term, so plus cosine 35. And on the other side of the equals, uh, well, yeah, let me leave this, let me write like this. I, bit inefficient with space here. That's there, and who have we left out? We've left out this term, 0 0.4 times six, cosine that. So let's put that here, plus 0 0.4 times six is 2.4, and that's cosine 35. Okay, what can we do? We can take this from both sides. Let me do that over here, six sine 35 minus 2.4 cosine 35, I've just taken this from both sides, equals P multiplied by this. So then we can just divide this by both sides. So let's just bring that across. And we get 0 0.4 sine 35 plus cosine 35. And that's, that's P equals. We can go ahead and put that into a calculator. And uh, be careful, it's a big sum like that easy to make mistakes, but if you put that in a calculator, you get 1.4, 1. 1. I think it's, I didn't write down, but 0, 0.7 or something, rounds off to 1.41, which is the, the full answer to this question. So just to recap there, you could have done this in an X, Y axis. I think you, you would get roughly the same answer eventually. So you get the, the same answer eventually, and it would start to look similar as you went through it. Um, I think you would have just ended up with a little bit messier. And it was, it was fairly messy though, doing it that way. Um, if you have, if you, first of all, if you see any mistakes, let me know. But if you have any follow-up questions, anything you weren't clear about, I didn't explain the best, please put them in the comments, uh, ask me, maybe somebody else will answer you. Who knows? Thanks for watching and have a great day.